So after logging in for seven days, you're gonna be greeted with an SSR advanced draw selection chest. This will allow you to select one SSR out of 17 different options. Do keep in mind, this is not every single SSR in the game, but it's a good start. Now, before deciding which SSR you wanna go for, there are three things that you need to consider. Number one, your SSR character faction buff. So if you're not familiar, if you have SSR characters with the same exact faction in your squad, you're gonna activate these buffs and check this out. It goes even more. So if you have six characters that are all SSR of the same exact faction, you're going to activate HP plus 5%. Below that, you're going to get resistance percentage plus 5%, attack plus 5%, armor penetration plus 5%, and a whole host of flat stats as well. The second thing that I would consider before selecting your free SSR character are your link details as well, because you can see here, if you activate certain links, dude, you can get some real big stat increases, right? So check this out. Right up here, I have this link activated. This is going to increase my attack by 18%. If I had Pan Pan, my H penis would be up 18%. And if I go a little lower than that, if I pick up Fire Nita over here, I can get yet another additional 18% attack. So having these link details activated is a huge source of power. And then the third and final thing that you need to consider before selecting your free SSR is what type of class deficiencies do you have in your team, right? So for example, when it comes to healers, there's not a lot of SSR healers that are in the game, right? I got really lucky and I was able to nab her but she is not available to be selected in the SSR ticket nor is Audrey right so if you really need a healer you have two really great options in the SSR selector in Pan Pan and Dina and luckily for a lot of you out there that are lacking some SSR healing types both Dina and Pan Pan are top tier on multiple different tier lists go for Dina if you want to go more the traditional healing type her heal here is going to heal three allies with the lowest HP penis on your team based on her HP and her attack so you can use both HP gear or attack gear on Dina she's going to thrive on either set or go for Pan Pan, she provides support via shields. You can see here she's gonna grant a shield equal to 10% of her max HP penis to herself and to random allies. So this is a really great candidate, once again, if you wanna go more shield style. And another benefit if you plan on going with Pan Pan is the fact that her skill does scale off of HP because so many of your characters on your roster probably scale off of attack, which means that your attack gear is gonna be really hard to come by. This is gonna kinda give you a break because you're gonna be collecting HP gear anyway. So having a character like Pan Pan that thrives off of it is a net bonus. Now, when it comes to the three options of S tier characters that you can select, I gotta say that two of them are pretty much non-starters. That's gonna be Fenrir and it's gonna be Niz. And my reasoning behind that is because both Fenrir and Niz are free characters. So in my opinion, if you're gonna be using the selector, it's probably best to number one, try to get a character that's gonna complete your faction bonus or a character that's gonna provide some type of support or some type of skill that's gonna make your other characters thrive. Those would be my priorities. And in my opinion, those supersede just trying to get some extra power and damage out of these characters by duping them out like for example right so you already have Fenrir you decide to use a selector to get another copy of her okay you go from 151 to 159 you go from 100 to 120 which is a big jump but again I think getting the faction bonuses or the links or a much needed class type is more important right um you take a look at Niz here she goes from 166 to 174 um, with a 35 percent chance to cost freeze once again not nothing to sniff at but I still think trying to complete your roster trying to get a well-rounded team is a better thing to go for this early in the game versus dupes. And then the final S tier character is going to be Fire Nita. She's actually pretty cool, but do be mindful that you're not running a team that's like heavy on cleanses or something like that um, because her claim to fame is basically taking debuffs from herself and then applying it to targets. So if you're like constantly cleansing your debuffs, she's might, she might not be as effective as she could be, but still a good pick overall and one character I almost went for just to complete my link. You also have three characters under the A tier, including Nightingale, who's all about silence, Zawa, who's all about blinding, and lastly, Regina, who I'm gonna be going for, who's all about armor break. So we just went over three tiers, S plus S and A. The final two tiers, the B and C tiers, you gotta look at these a little differently. Don't think of these characters as being like worse per se than the other characters. Think of them as more situational, right? So B tier is situational, C tier is even more situational. Let me give you a few examples. So one of the characters that I'm currently running in the B tier here is Towerette. She's a really great character, but she's situational. You can see here with her ability called Smashdown, she does more damage the more debuffs that are on a target. So she requires a little bit more setup to really take off, right? Now, if you're building a team around that, you're good to go. But if you're not, she's not gonna be as useful as she could be, thus she's situational. Another situational character is gonna be Camilla. She gets stronger as she goes lower in HP. But if you have like a really healthy, powerful healing team, you're probably not gonna get the maximum usage out of this character, right? 
Star is another B tier character that's kind of situational because she's really based on the power of your other teammates, right? If you look at her passive at the start of battle, all your allies crit rate is going to be increased by 10% for one round. Now in other gacha games, one round doesn't really mean too much, but in a game like this, where so many characters start combat with a full rage meter, having a unit like this is actually pretty useful, but again, also kind of situational, right? And as you move down to the C tier, you have a character like Beam, who's in the same exact situation as Camilla, right? She gets more powerful the lower her HP is. Once again, if you have a team that's really overpowered, you know, healthy heals, you might not get a lot of use out of a character like Beam, right? Bastet is another C-tier character that's situational. Um, she has an additional ability called Omnus that basically makes all the debuffs that you put on an enemy do true damage instead. Now, if you're not rocking a debuff team, well, Bastet's not going to be really good, right? So with all that being known, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm going to be going for Regina. So we'll go ahead and unlock our girl here. Welcome to the squad, Regina. You're looking good. And next, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my links. We're going to move Shiyu over to the assist category, along with Stara over here. We have 12 links activated. You love to see with a max leader buff, all six deployed, all in the same faction. I'm loving it. All right, let me check out my new and improved team. <laughs> GG